there's there's uh so there's a lot to go into when when we're looking at the Patriots and I was preaching all off season that I think they're gonna be a top five pick. Now I will very much say during that Eagles game on Sunday, while the same at the same time while the Dolphins game was going on, we were at Hooters, so we were able to watch all the games at once. They looked a lot better in spite of losing. They looked a lot better than I expected to. I never would have expected against the Eagles defense that Mac Jones would have the most amount of pass attempts in his career. I would never expect that the Patriots have the ball with less than a minute to go with the opportunity to go down and win the game. So, Donovan, I was actually weirdly impressed in spite of them losing at home on Sunday. Yeah, honestly, I don't, I don't know if maybe it was because Tom Brady was in the building. I, I don't know if it's... Oh, that know, was a that was a pathetic bell that he did. It was like ding ding. Like, there was even, no enthusiasm. Not going to get into it. Not going to even get into that. Um, uh, but yeah, just like the Eagles, they have. I I kept saying all off season. I think they're going to regress defensively because they lost a lot of important pieces. Like yeah, they have a whole bunch of young guys. It's a super young defense now. They have a new defensive coordinator with the help of Matt Patricia. So. I mean, how good has he been as a coach when not on the Patriots? So, yeah. So, even going further into it, they, they, like I said, first year of a new defense, their defensive coordinator, now the head coach of the Cardinals, possible one, uh, number one and number two overall picks. Um, and, yeah, it's just, I don't know what to think. Like, they have an actual offensive coordinator now with Bill O'Brien, or was it just the defense was that bad? Yeah. I, I, I I don't know. There's don't. there's a lot of things to look at with this Patriots team compared to last year. So uh, the biggest difference is the fact that they do you know actually have an offensive coordinator. Bill O'Brien is you know at the very least a competent coach. I think his biggest issue was as a GM. It, you know obviously the DeAndre Hopkins trade is the biggest red flag of of what he was as a GM. But as an offensive play caller, he did pretty good at Alabama. And it appears the off the, the Patriots passing offense has gotten better. Mac Jones looks a little bit more comfortable. The ground game really wasn't there as much last week, but also you look at the, the monsters that the Philadelphia Eagles have on their defensive line. It's it's very understandable. But Mac Jones, I've I've been very critical of him. I've been very critical of this offense in general. He was without Dante, Devontae Parker, so without his fourth best receiver. Um had to throw that out there because Donovan still loves that man, just like Ryan Tannehill, for no reason. They're both not good. Um, with, without without him, with Juju playing pretty bad, uh, they 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 looked pretty solid. The offense looked capable. Ramondre Stevenson didn't get very involved as, as much as he expected to, but still had a decent game. Zeke, you know, had a fumble. Ground like the ground game still wasn't there, but Matt Jones just in general looked better, and I was actually somewhat impressed by him. He was one of like three guys on Sunday to throw for over 300 yards and three touchdowns. Didn't throw an intercept. I think he threw one interception. So. I think we are getting a better Mac Jones than we did last year. Yeah, and, you know, Kendrick Bourne, I've been saying he's an extremely underrated receiver as well, and he kind of showed up and showed out a little bit. What do you have, like 11 catches for over 100 yards? Um, Pretty damn good day for him. Uh, it was like five catches, 67, no, 67 yards on a touchdown. I, it was – it was – no, because he got he got a because I know you're thinking of his fantasy stat line, so you're trying to do the math about it. I'm pretty sure it was like five catches, sixty something yards, and a touchdown, which would I then like, that, that's like about twenty points. I think he had twenty eight, didn't he? Twenty? No, I think it was like twenty four. I picked him up in a league, which feels gross. Like I I hate I don't like <laughs> typically I don't like picking up players on my own team, but I even more dislike except for this year Brees Hall. I very much dislike having players. Uh, on the teams that I hate. Uh, sorry, I'm a massive Brees Hall fan this year, and, and according to my Dynasty League, I will be a massive fan of him for a very long time. What league do I have him in? He looked he looked really good, though. Like, and Nobody expected Kendrick him Moore. to be the number one option when you have Juju, yeah. when you have Devontae Parker, who... Hunter Henry also looked much improved. Like, got, the Dude, guys that were already... Cash. The guys that were already on the team last year on the offensive side of the ball all flourished decently well last week. Yeah, even undrafted free agent Demario Douglas at the end of the game was playing instead of Juju. Like, that's how much. Yeah, Juju the, looked terrible. Ima- uh, it's um, imagine, six catches, imagine. sixty-four yards, and, a, and two touchdowns. So six catches, sixty-four okay, yards, two, two touchdowns. touchdowns from Kendrick Bourne. Yeah. So, uh, and then you know Demario Douglas also looked good. Like I said, he was outplaying Juju, 
and Juju. Imagine paying Juju the same price as Jacoby Myers and letting Jacoby Myers walk. And look how Jacoby looked on, like with with Garoppolo in a very similar offense that's going to be run in New England. Looked very good. You let him walk. You bring. Yeah. You give Devontae Parker a really weird contract, and you you pay that money to Juju instead of him, and and you you're, you're seeing a massive difference in player uh, between the two of them and, and their defense. Their defense did a good job at shutting down the Eagles. Now, there's a few things behind that. The the Eagles have lost a couple coordinators, especially in recent years. They've had multiple different offensive coordinators, I think, each of the last two years. Uh, the starters didn't really play in preseason, but Jalen Hurts looked pretty rattled. and like He had a few turnovers. Yeah. He had a really big turnover that could have cost them the game at the end. Jabril Peppers getting in there, laying the absolute boom on Jalen Hurts. Made Hurts uncomfortable. Everybody on that Eagles offense outside of Devonta Smith had at best an underwhelming game yeah and honestly like that that defense you know it's going to be there every single year it may not be flashy but it's always good like matt judon christian gonzalez that rookie that they somehow traded away their pick to screw over the jets and then moved back and still got the guy that they wanted was like the master class of uh, the draft to me, Bill Belichick doing his OG style stuff there. But, um, but yeah, that defense just looked really good. Christian Gonzalez looked really good. Uh, and I'm excited to kind of see what we could do against that defense. I think that is a better defense than the chargers defense that we faced. Now given, I think the chargers defense was pretty good. And we just exposed them like we do. But, you know, what do I know? Yeah, I, I do expect the offense to, to look to look decently good. Uh, Khalil, what's up? Thanks for getting involved. If, if you guys are watching along right now on the live stream, you, make sure to get involved in the chat. And if you're watching this in post, also get involved in the chat. Um, but the, the, the team just in general. The, the looking at the Patriots for what they are just in general looks massively improved from the world last year. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not getting overzealous here. I, it's still a Bill Belichick team in 2023, a team that relies on defense, a team that treats their best player like they're just a, a backup middle linebacker. This is a team that is still kind of in the Stone Age when it comes to running an NFL team, especially on the offensive side of things. Like Bill O'Brien is a good offensive coach, but them getting Bill O'Brien isn't like us getting Vic Fangio. And Vic Fangio's defense... Definitely looked a little bit suspicious last week, and that's something we'll talk about in our, in our next segment. Uh, but they're not getting a Mike McDaniel. They're not getting a, a young, creative play caller that is coming in with these new techniques to try to really expose NFL defenses. They're, they brought in somebody who was like kind of tried and trusted, who was a previously an NFL coach, previously a coordinator in college. He's going to do a job, and he's going to make, He's definitely going to elevate Mac Jones, whereas last year Mac Jones was probably a bottom 10 starter in the NFL. I could see him elevating back into the range of like the 15th to 20th best quarterback. I wouldn't really expect much above that because just, I mean, we got to see, you know, on Sunday the plethora of talent in the NFL and with, with a bunch of those guys, top guys, like not playing well. Like Lamar didn't do that good. Her, or not Herbert, Bur Burrow didn't do that good. There's multiple like star level quarterbacks who didn't have a great day, and you see Tua led the league in passing. Brock Purdy looks like he's taking another step. Like there's just so much talent at the quarterback position. I think Mac Jones is not going to be back to his Pro Bowl self, but he's definitely going to be better than he was last year. He's in, in, in a third year with his team. It has some familiarity with some guys, and those guys played well on Sunday. So I don't think this is going to be necessarily a cakewalk, but. The New England Patriots are a shell of what they used to be. I, I, I still, I'd be surprised if they got over seven wins total for the year. Maybe I'm a little, a little far off from when in the preseason I said they were going to be a, a bottom five team, but it still very much could happen that they end up with a top five pick. I mean, they do still have a difficult schedule, almost the same exact schedule that we do. Um, you know, that's just how it happens per division, but. Uh, yeah, it's a very difficult schedule, so it's still possible that that happens, that, you know, they don't have enough talent to come on top, no matter how good the coaching is. Uh, like I said, I think they're going to be massively improved. I do think that the loss of Aaron Rodgers uh, for the Jets, I think that they now at least split with the Jets, if not sweep the Jets. Um, and I, I don't really think that's too far off to say. Like, Jets have very good defense, but now their offense, huge question mark with Zach Wilson as the starting quarterback. 
go back to the Patriots, what do they do that is so exceptional, but what do they do that is also really bad? I, I think the worst part of their team right now is their offensive line, and that's strictly because they have five of their starters. That's that's all of their starting starting linemen are on the injury report. Two of them did not participate with concussions. Now, is that because I am large, Jordan Davis, or is that because of Speedy Gonzalez, Jordan, uh, <laughs> Jalen Davis? Uh, you know, what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Talk yourself into a corner there. I I, I, I I lost where I was going with that. It's okay. What you usually do, and then you usually start rambling. So I appreciate you actually stopped this time instead of continuing on rambling. Um, they they have they have talented players. They 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 are not they're not the same team they were last year. And they we did split with them last year, albeit with with a backup quarterback. But last year before when we were as fully healthy as we really were all season long, week one, we won and. They never really looked like they were going to come back and win the game, but they made life difficult. They made life difficult for Tua. He didn't get all the chances he wanted. We like later on in the year and what we saw last week, we weren't hitting like plays like deep down the fields. It was a lot underneath stuff, uh, middle like short to intermediate. Whereas instead of just like strictly living in the intermediate to long, that we didn't get that as much last year. It was a, it was a tight game for the entire game, and, and not really at any point did I truly feel like. We were going to lose the game, but they made life difficult. Flash forward now a year, and again, both teams are just about as healthy as we're, as we're going to be. We'll get into injuries again, probably in the next segment. Uh, likely to cross your fingers to see Teron Armstead come back. So the offensive line is only going to continue to get better. This offense looks even massive, massively compared to just week one last year, where the, that, that offense compared to the Brian Flores regime looks a massive step up from that, and then from there we've just continued that massive step up, and the offense looks more beautiful. It looks more well, well, well refined. Mike McDaniel's getting a better understanding of, of play calls and situational awareness. I'm not just just kind of putting it bluntly put. I'm not really concerned about the Patriots. I I have a hard time envisioning a scenario which results in us losing to the Patriots. Call me ignorant. Call me. You know, a fanboy. Call me somebody who you know. You know, call me whatever you want. But like, I, am I crazy? Like, I don't really see there's a chance that we lose this game. 